Hi, everyone. Welcome to College Financial Preps, Preparing for College podcast. Very happy today to have our guest, Michelle Steiner, join us. We're going to be talking about disabilities and going to college. Welcome, Michelle. Vicki, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, it, It's a wonderful topic to discuss, and we don't discuss it often enough. Do me a favor. Tell us all about Michelle's mission. Sure. Michelle's mission is my blog. And the, I write, I have disability articles and photography on there. And Michelle's mission is designed to encourage, empower, and educate people with and without disabilities. Fabulous. And, and, and tell us, disabilities, planning for college. I know that you had your, your own stories to share. Where should we even begin? <laughs> <laughs> Well, definitely with with having a learning disability, I know what that can be like with going to college. If we go back even to um, when I first began school as a student, I, I was diagnosed with a learning disability in kindergarten. And I knew it was a challenge for me academically and socially, but I knew from the time I was really young, a few things. I knew I had a learning disability. I knew that I wanted to go to college and I knew that I definitely wanted to help other people that uh, had disabilities. That's where my my journey began and uh, get it going to college though. I I was definitely something that I feared because I knew that I wanted to do it, but could I handle it? I was doing well with all the supports that we had uh, in place with uh, an individual education plan. Some some of my other uh, people didn't think that, that that I could do that as well. I had a learning support teacher that said, maybe you should go to uh, Votech. And there was just nothing there that really interested me. And I, I had a student teacher, though, that really encouraged me. She goes, I think you can go to college. You know how to study. And sometimes that was the voice that I heard in my head when I was at school and things were really hard. But before I went to college, I got involved with the program called Office for Vocational Rehabilitation. And they're a federal agency uh, in the United States that provides uh, free testing for learning disabilities or any other kind of uh, qualifying disability. And once you get in there, they, they were able to pay for all my years of school. I was able to graduate debt-free. And they... Yeah, thank you. And they provide the accommodations that were needed that really helped. And I can remember even before we went in there, I I also visited, I went to a college fair where they had different schools that provided services because I knew going in, I was going to need certain things before I did that. So do me a favor, let me stop you right there. Sure. What type of supports did you have in high school and or even earlier than that? (laughs) And were you able to find the same type of support in college? Well, I then when I was, the supports were different. Some of them were the same though. When I first started, I had to repeat kindergarten as a, uh, you know, beginning with that. They, I got tested. They said, okay, the next year you're repeating kindergarten. And I began to receive specialty services along with kindergarten in a different school. And I also began to have some accommodations as well. One of the things that I I just needed a different way to learn a lot of things. And in the beginning, it was all in the learning support other than kindergarten. And we would uh, do specialty instruction to help me learn how to read and to write. Um, We attempted to learn how to do math, but (laughs) never really got far with that. (laughs) And I remember being really frustrated and eventually though the services started to work and we found out, oh, she can read, she's able to write. We can put her in some regular ed classes for reading and science and social studies. And I began to have some of the accommodations that I would see at college having extended test time. I had a test read aloud to me. And when I went to college though, I didn't have an individual education plan, but I had um, a service plan that was in place because I, uh, when I had to get retested for having one, uh, sure enough, it came up that I had a learning disability and some other things that were going on too. And I had, I carried on with having extended test time. When I used them, I didn't use them initially, and that, that was not a great choice to make, but 
uh, when I did use them, it was extended test time. I also uh, at university had a note taker. I had uh, tutoring when I needed it. I also had scheduling where I could schedule before other students did priority scheduling. What did you have to do to get all of these services in place at the college you attended? I had to be tested to have uh, have a uh, disability, and that oh, was by the college. By the college, yes. That huh. well, that was with OVR. They sent me to have a psyche valve with with the psychiatrist, and it was a full day of testing. And I can remember, I'm not a good test taker. That's always been one of my big downfalls uh, in a lot of things. And my scores were so low that a psychiatrist told me, you're most likely not going to go beyond community college. And just hearing that was really devastating to me because I, I was already scared. I knew someday maybe I would like to get a bachelor's degree. Maybe I would like to do that. And there was even a stigma when I went to college with getting some of these accommodations. People were thinking they gave an unfair advantage. I even had a professor that said, you know, you're going to have limited job choices. So uh, disabilities on campus, while those services were necessary and the testing to get them were, uh, there's still such a stigma, there was such a stigma that surrounded them. Tell everyone. So you graduated. What was your major? <laughs> sure. Um, you're successful today. That's fine. Now, when I went to community college, I was able to graduate with an associate's degree in early childhood education. I moved out on my own and I worked in some centers, but I always wanted more for myself. And financially, uh, I had uh, to move back in with my parents and the job I was at downsized. I thought this is the time to go back to university. And I majored in Community Programming for Americans with Disabilities, and that's the service end of special education. They, they call it transition specialists now, a little easier for people to understand what you may be doing. And I was able to get a bachelor's degree and, and be able to do a lot better when I used the services. Fabulous. So what would you recommend to parents that, you know, have children that are, you know, in, in middle school, high school, you know, and they're thinking about, you know, can my child go to college? I would recommend for a lot of parents to start looking at the transition services um, and, and find out what their child wants to do. I know I worked with, worked with seventh graders last year and we would start to fill out the paper and they're like, well, I don't know what I want to do. And we're like, well, nothing set in stone, but we're just trying to get an idea of what you like, because we might have a student that says, I want to go to college and we can think, okay, what are the best ways to support you in doing this? But I might have a student that says, I, I don't know if I want to do college. I want to do bo tech. And that's perfectly fine too. It's just no, kind of getting an idea of what they like and how, how to gear goals around that. And once you find out what they like, looking at the different programs that are offered on campus, looking at the ones that have uh, the accommodations, because they vary. I mean, there are a lot of schools that uh, receive federal funding have to provide those services, but you might find different disability accommodations with different schools. So it's looking out and saying, okay, well, what services do they provide here? Are they covered under my child's tuition? Uh, or will we be having to pay out of pocket? That's another oh. consideration too. And looking for what uh, scholarships are out there, but also uh, checking into what uh, vocational rehabilitation has too. Uh, they can do a, a lot of things for students that have disabilities uh, while they're in school. And uh, they're definitely a resource to, to see if they, they would qualify. Oh, very important. So when, when parents and children are looking at colleges, which office should they go to? What accommodations are, are typical? What accommodations are more specialized and not every school has them? Right. A lot of the typical accommodations that you will find is uh, extended test time and also the option of having a test read aloud. Those are pretty common. Note takers, that, that can vary. Some people, a lot of schools, it's pretty common, but some, they may not have that service. Some might do more of the traditional, okay, you can record the lecture. Others might even have special pens where you can take them, like with, with the notes where it's recorded. Some schools have it where they do that. Other ones do the traditional method of you have somebody in the class that um, take notes. That's what we did when I was 
in, in college. Other schools might have things if someone's visually impaired, they might have like some things that can magnify objects like that. Uh, tutoring might be available at some places. Uh, or extra or special ones. Sometimes there's even schools that might even have a transition program to see if college is right for you where you can audit classes for the first couple of years. Uh, and some just have a disability program. And some of the an important thing to remember with those, they may not necessarily count towards a credit with a major, but they can get their feet wet and see, okay, is this what I want to do? Or is it better to go somewhere else? Some schools are just for students with disabilities and other ones, they have the, the programs on campus. And, and the thing that you want to look, parents want to look for is office for students with disabilities, diversity office. I mean, there's a lot of different names or even disability accommodations and just see what's out there. Fabulous. So informative. I'm going to thank you so much for joining us today. That was really great and helpful. Wow. Do me a favor. How can everybody get in touch with you? You can find me at my blog, michellesmission.net, and I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. And in addition to college, what types of things do you talk about on your blog? I talk about life with a learning disability, and I use a lot of metaphors to describe that. Uh, nature is an important thing. I'm not able to drive because of my visual perception. Uh, it's in my brain, not in my eyes, but I'm able to uh, capture details and photographs. So a lot of times I put up photography as well. And I have a little store on my blog that people can get notebooks and journals. And uh, I even have a forum where people can uh, discuss disability related topics. Fabulous. Thank you so much for being with us today. From college Thank Financial you. Preps, Preparing for College podcast. Thanks, Michelle. Take Thank care, you. everyone. You too.